Here we have the loom set up in the weaving position. Notice in the background that we've added the warp helper to the far rear side. Over the dowel of the warp helper, we've already installed the first string from the back beam. Notice on the heddle, we have marked the bottom rail with one inch increments and also with a large circle, the location in the heddles where we'll need to slip on the back strings from the back beam. Our weaver has the warp in her hand holding the cross between her thumb and the fingers. We still have it tied, but she's going to remove the ties now to prepare for a threading of the heddle. With the ties removed, the cross is securely in your hand. Remove any slackness by pulling on the tail of it so it sits firmly in between your thumb and fingers. Now with the cross between the thumb and the fingers, reach over and locate the top loop and pull it off your hand. This is the first loop that will thread through the heddle. With the heddle hook in one hand and the loop in the other, we bring the hook through the heddle, through a slot, six inches from the middle, and we pull the loop to the back of the loom and we put it on the, the dowel of the warp helper. This process continues across the width of the heddle until you've used all the loops that are in your hand. This is how the back of your loom looks after you've threaded all the loops through the slots on the heddle. Tie strings are in place on the dowel on the warp helper. This is your warp laid out leading into the front of the loom. This is the location of the warp that you'll need as you wind the warp onto the back beam. With an assistant pulling back on your warp, we're going to wind the warp on the back beam. The assistant must put tension on the warp so that it goes onto the beam uh, tightly. As your first sheet of paper ends, get another sheet and slip it in underneath the warp and continue winding on with tension being applied by the assistant. You are finished winding when the warp is near the front beam. At this point, you can take a pair of scissors and cut the ends of the warp off so you have loose ends. Now we're ready for the final threading of the heddle. Now we're working our way across the heddle. Notice that we have a pair of warps coming through each slot. What we want to do now is take one of that pair to the back of the heddle, pull it through the slot, and bring it back through to the front using the heddle hook and bringing it back through through the next available hole on the heddle not the slot, the next hole. As we work our way across this heddle, there should be a warp in every slot, in every hole, with no emissions, no doubling up, heddle hole, heddle hole, all the way across. Don't make a mistake, it will affect your weaving. Here we have it, a perfect threading job of the heddle from left to right. All the slots, all the holes filled the way they're supposed to be. Now we're ready to tie on to the front beam.
Here you see us tying onto the front beam stick. We're working with one inch segments of the warp from left to right. We're bringing those segments to the beam stick and securing them for the time being with just one overhand knot. Work your way from the outside in towards the middle, making sure that the heddle is now in the up position on the heddle holders. We now have the warp tied to the beam stick. There are 12 groups of warps. The next thing we must do is check the tension on each of those 12 groups of warp. We want the tension on each group to be the same. We do this from working from the outside in using our finger and we simply depress the warps. If we find a loose group, we simply take the ends and tighten it up at the beam stick making that particular set tighter and equal to the tightest warp group that you currently have tied to the beam. Work your way from the outside in, testing the tension on each group back and forth. You may in fact have to retie a single group more than once to equalize the tension. When you're satisfied that the tension is equal on all 12 groups, Finish off the knot with another overhand knot and make it secure. 